so I can only you know see few places, uh, stiff places. I believe that we will meet again when the kuliah organized the roof day, inshallah. Um, so today uh, I am given very little time to introduce the kuliah and to welcome all of you. All right. So let me share with you some of the slides that I have prepared. And I would like to share uh, some, there is a video clip. I hope I can play it and I hope you can uh, listen to the message of the dean. So this is our dean, Professor Dr. Shukran Abdul Rahman. Uh, this is myself and this is the Dep uh, Datin Dr. Associate Professor Datin Dr. Aini Mazmina Abdul Manaf. She is the Deputy Dean of uh, uh, Academic and Industrial Linkages. Yeah. So she takes care of undergraduate programs. And finally, this is uh, Dr. Muhammad Noor Abdul Jalil. Uh, he is taking care of uh, under, undergraduate student activities. Uh, the Deputy Dean of Student Development and Community Engagement. All right. Uh, so let me try to play this one. Uh, the message from the dean. Let me see. Okay, we hear it. We hear it. Okay, you can hear it. Everybody looks forward to having good quality of life. Here and he, in the hereafter. How to have good quality of life? We have quality life here or in the hereafter with knowledge. For those of you who have completed your studies for your first degree here or in other places, we congratulate you. We believe that the knowledge that you have acquired at your undergraduate level has enabled you to relate to issues that you observe in your surrounding. The knowledge, the skills that you have acquired in your undergraduate programs and so on, has enabled you to pursue your studies at the postgraduate level. We welcome you to join us in the postgraduate programs in the Kulia of Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences, either at master's level or PhD level. In the postgraduate programs in the Kulia, you will have the opportunities to work with our scholars in producing knowledge in applying knowledge, in relating knowledge for good use in the society. Knowledge that we acquire in the polia, knowledge that you are going to generate together with your supervisors or professors will enable you to apply them for good use, for good use in the society. In the polia, we integrate Islamic reveal knowledge and human sciences so that the Islamic reveal knowledge principles, the human sciences knowledge and principles could be combined together and applied to solve issues in the society so that we can help the society in changing, in developing, and also in improving their quality of life. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's join us. Let's join other fellow postgraduate students and scholars in the Kulia to generate knowledge and disseminate it for the benefit of mankind. Welcome to the Kulia of Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences and be ready to be producing and consuming knowledge for good use of yourself and others of this world. Thank you. All right, Alhamdulillah, that is there are so many messages in the welcoming speech of our dean and i hope you can embrace what he has said in the last um, uh, words of his words yeah he said that um you are now uh, going to produce going to consume and going to benefit the knowledge uh, to others yeah uh, and this is in line with the hadith of the Prophet uh, So we aspire that uh, our graduates will be able to embark on useful research, beneficial research, not only for your uh, personal consumption, not only for your uh, profile, 
yeah, as academics yeah, uh, that you can use this profile to get recruited at the good universities or research center. But most importantly, your knowledge will be able to benefit mankind. Yeah, and this is in line with the aspiration of the university. Uh, we want to... Um, we want to advocate uh, the knowledge for the for the women kind. Eh? Rahmatan lil alamin. Okay, the vision of the kulia is to be the center for educational excellence in research in Islamic revealed knowledge and human sciences. So, if uh, some of you who are new to our kulia, yeah, I am so delighted and so uh, happy to tell you that this is the unique feature of our kulia. We try to integrate reveal knowledge and social sciences. You may not find this in other European or uh, maybe uh, um, Islamic or Arab uh, universities in the Gulf countries uh, because normally, um, you know, IRK or reveal knowledge stands on it, its own and social sciences stands on it, its own. However, in this kulia, we want to reconcile and we want to integrate uh, reveal knowledge with human sciences, understanding revelation for making the life of humankind better. Yeah. Uh, and the vision and the mission of the of the kulia, first of all, is integration and then Islamization, relevantization, research and innovation in the disciplines of revealed knowledge and human sciences. Therefore, we welcome titles of your research that is able to integrate your knowledge. Uh, say, for example, if you are revealed knowledge students, then we welcome titles that integrate um, social sciences or humanities title yeah, in your research. Yeah. So this will make um, your titles unique and also um, fulfill the requirements of a research and whereby in every research we look forward to, um, to promote the, the gap or to research on the gap of the subject matter yeah, where the research gap is and you want to explore further, you want to examine further. And also that is very innovative in nature. Yeah, that is very innovative in nature. So if you are able to come with uh, such titles, you need not to worry about the originality of your research because it is already uh, embedded in, the, in your research gap. So at our kulia, we also adopt synergetic approach to teaching, consultancy, research, innovation, and publication. What does this mean? This means that your lecturers or your supervisors, in addition to their core business as teachers, as instructors, yeah, they are also required to do consultation based on their own expertise, yeah, uh, their uh, disciplines, and also uh, they are required to do research and normally this research um, are done together with their postgraduate students. So uh, most of the time when the, the lecturers are with uh, funded research, they will engage uh, the graduates to be their research assistant and the graduates can be uh, funded by the research funding. This is one advantage if your supervisors have research funding yeah and uh, innovation with regard to the innovation remember just now i'm talking about research gap i'm talking about originality of your research whenever you have originality in your research uh, there is lots of opportunity actually for you and for your supervisor to register your research under the section of innovation yeah? we have um we have some uh, the relevant agencies in the university that uh, can register uh, your innovation in the respective area of research. And finally, definitely publications. Yeah? If you are a master's student by research or PhD students, uh, regardless whether you are under mixed mode or uh, uh, under research mode, you are required to Right, yeah, you are required to publish paper. Uh, for that, that is um, 
a merit for their publication. Inshallah, when you come to the kuliah, we will explain to you about the merit of that publication. All right. And then let me go to the next slide. Okay. To further enhance the management of postgraduate program at the Kulia, we have appointed coordinators. For your kind information, there are 10 departments under AHAS KIRKHS. This is like a university in itself. So you can imagine the number of postgraduate students under this Kulia. We used to have like 1,200, up to 1,500 postgraduate students. So that's very big number to handle. And therefore, we have appointed postgraduate coordinators at the department. So this is one of the rule of the thumb for graduate students. Um, regardless which department you belong to, please be alerted who is the postgraduate coordinators at your department. Try to establish uh, networking with them, email them, yeah? visit them at their offices, make appointment before you go and see them. Uh, and you can cast your inquiries, questions, uh, problems with your postgraduate coordinators and they will be able to solve your problem. Yeah. I mean, at least they can give you proper advice. So these are some of the uh, their faces. Yeah. And uh, I hope that right after this program, you can browse the department's website and look for the name of the PG coordinator at your department. If their names are not there, what I can advise you to do, check with the uh, personal assistant at the department, the secretary at the department, they will be able to advise you. Yeah. All right. So basically our programs, I think in general, you know this eh? because you, when you enroll into the program, you know already that this program uh, takes how many semesters, takes how many years. Yeah. So I would like all of you to from the very good from the very beginning of your enrollment to determine <laughs> that you are going to finish your study within the stipulated time. Yeah, for full time master, one to three years. Yeah, for part time, three to five years. For PhD, full time, two to six years, and part time, four to eight years. Yeah, if you can achieve GOT. What is GOT? Graduate on time, which means that for full time you finish in two years, uh, one year time, yeah, two semesters. Uh, that is the minimum, yeah. Uh, but for the normal uh, graduation is two years time, and for uh, part time masters, uh, three years time or two years time minimum, and three years time uh, for the normal period. For PhD, you can graduate in two years' time. Uh, this is the minimum, and this is for full time. Uh, and for PhD part time, you can graduate in four years' time. Yeah. So, for example, PhD, you can graduate two years' time or three years' time. That is very uh, good. Uh, period uh, or length of time for you to study uh, because I think you have also to think about to consider your career after you finish your study so the sooner the better remember that yeah the sooner the better okay so um, these are the programs offered so don't worry about the uh, credential or the accreditation because alhamdulillah our programs are all accredited by the acap uh, all right so what about research at our kulias as you uh, are aware just now i have shown you the there are 10 departments at the kulia so our research ranging from different areas are uh, in humanity studies. Yeah? So um, even though you are in Usuluddin or you are from Quran Sunnah studies, you may also explore something in relation to history uh, or something in relation to philosophy or language, yeah? linguistic studies, yeah? or even uh, what else? Um, archaeology uh, this uh, but then you may need co-supervisor from from other departments in the kulia say for example you are from usuludin and you want to 
uh, research something in relation to history, for example, manuscript study, you can request to have co-supervisor from history. And vice versa, like if you're from, say, for example, sociology, and you want to uh, the to bring um, Islamic perspective of your research, for example, you may also request for a course supervisor from either Fiqh Usulul Fiqh or Quran Sunnah studies. Yeah, so you are very lucky because we have the expertise. So if let's say you choose to write research on that particular um, area or subject matter, uh, you um, are actually incorporating either Islamization or integration and relevantization in your research. Or uh, you may also do research that is rele related to Makosidu Sharia, the principles, the objectives of the Sharia. And also we welcome titles on sustainable development goals. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, when you come to the kuliah for the program, you will be able to explore this further with your uh, lecturers, with your supervisor, inshallah. Or feel free to come over to my office and we can discuss about this matter. Okay, so you were not alone in this journey, even though I know that many people say that PhD or you know PG studies is a lonely journey. Well, basically, you choose either to be lonely or to be with the company of people, you know, intelligent people, uh, good researchers. Yeah, because if you do your research, come to the university, register, and go back, lock down yourself in your room then it's going to be a lonely journey. Yeah? But if you are present on campus, get involved with the, with the intellectual programs organized by the Kulia, yeah? join our research skill workshops because from time to time, the Kulia will organize research skill workshop. I bet you will be able to keep yourself with numbers of research tools. Now, as graduate students, you are... Um, you are commanded, uh, it is commendable that you have uh, a research toolbox. What is research toolbox? Just like your toolbox at home, can you have all the um, all the nuts, all the, I do not know what to say, these uh, gadgets in your toolbox, eh? but you have all the necessary tools whenever you need it at your, at your consumption. Yeah, the same goes to research skill workshop. Now, if you say, for example, are equipped with quantitative uh, research skills uh, or qualitative research skills, so you can do research at any time you want, given that you have all those skills. Yeah, uh, inshallah, uh, as the deputy dean, I will try my very best to provide good research skills program for our postgraduate students. We want to make sure that when you graduate from this university, you are a competent researcher. All right. So these are good programs that we organize. As you know, that we have 10 departments, mashallah, they are all your uh, programs organized by all these 10 departments. Please take time to join these programs as participants because you will definitely learn a lot yeah, from these programs. Yeah. So that's why I said just now, don't lock up yourself in the room, be present on campus. Whenever we organize programs, Please come to the programs, get to know people, get to know lecturers, build your networking because you may not know that in future you may bump into these speakers uh, and you may be interviewed by them when you want to get yourself recruited at their universities or institutions. What I am trying to say, make yourself visible. So to our international graduates here, please don't, <laughs> please don't go back. Don't go home after you have registered the program, even though you are a research mode student, because there are so many things that you need to learn from uh, if you are here. So we have also International Postgraduate Colloquium Research Poster Competition, whereby you can share your research ideas or your research findings in this International Postgraduate Colloquium. The coming one will be in August. So inshallah, we will make noise of this colloquium 
please join and see how your seniors are presenting their research ideas. Perhaps next year you can join. And Alhamdulillah, in our kuliah, we have established a reveal knowledge graduate social uh, graduate uh, student society. Yeah? Um, so you have postgraduate society at our kuliah, and so far they have established. They have organized many programs. Um, this um, RECSOC, uh, we call it RECSOC, and it has um, its first AGM very recently. Uh, we have uh, Idol Fitri celebration together with the AGM. And Alhamdulillah, as I told you that we have a number of research skills workshop even before the establishment of this uh, postgraduate society, inshallah. Uh, coming soon, we will have a boot camp uh, program for graduate uh, students uh, to help them with their research skills. And Alhamdulillah, in terms of the facilities, we have um, a PG room for sister. And now the PG room for brothers is under uh, refurbishment. Inshallah, you will have a room whereby you can sit down and exchange ideas with other graduate students, eh? but not room for you to, you know, to sleep or to eat or to you know have very casual chit chat eh? it's supposed to be very uh, uh, what you call it beneficial room for people to uh, to dis discuss together yeah? something in relation to your research okay now for research mode students uh, um, research mode students, masters, and post uh, PhD students, yeah, mixed mode and research mode, you are required to publish paper. So do not worry, because at our kulia we have how many? At least 11, 11 journals. Some of them are paid journals, which means that you have to pay to publish, and some of them uh, accept. Uh, publication without fees. Yeah? So you do not worry about where to publish your work. Um, now, for example, um, it, Al Itkan, this is the journal uh, owned by the Department of uh, Suludin and Comparative Religion. It is free of charge. Um, I think um, I, am, I, I am journal of Human sciences is also free of charge. Yeah? Uh, intellectual discourse is a Scopus journal. A, uh, uh, Asiatic, okay. Asiatic, this is an uh, English uh, language and literature journal. Both of them are Scopus journal. Yeah? If you can publish in this, these two journals, they are very reputable. Another index journal um, uh, uh, is Journal of Islam in Asia. Yeah, uh, this is also paid journal. Mm, if I'm not mistaken, we 500 or 1000. I'm not so sure. Intellectual discourse and Asiatic 1500 per publication, but they are, mashallah, a very reputable journal. Yeah, so, um, what else? Okay, and uh, um, they, these journals are also uh, indexed under my site. What is my site? My site is um, index um, index citation, um, Malaysian index citation, yeah? which means that if you want to know whether that journals is indexed or not by the Malaysian uh, education, so you can go to my site and see if the names of these journals are listed under my site. So your publication, if it is uh, published in the journal listed under my site, that can be accepted, All right? So don't publish in general that is not cited or indexed. Yeah? All right, so finally, I want to share with you the people, uh, our alumni, they are great, mashallah, successful uh, alumni. I believe you are familiar with uh, some of these spaces. Yeah? Uh, and inshallah, we hope that one day your face will also appear in the slides of the future deputy dean and they will be proudly introduce you to the graduates in future inshallah so i would say that alhamdulillah our kuliah has has produced good phd holders and master graduates and they are all uh, you know, uh, doing their job very well out there. So uh, finally, ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Looking forward to see you at the kuliah ta'aruf, inshallah.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, let me stop sharing. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Madam, for the presentation just now. Um, do you have any questions on the floor? Uh, since uh, the next session will begin. Uh, okay, Sister Putri Amina, you may unmute yourself. Assalamualaikum, uh, Dr. Haslina. Uh, I'm an alumni from uh, undergraduate KICT and I was thinking of uh, furthering a master's in political science and I was wondering if I can have a co-supervisor from a different kuliah, for example, from KICT and also one in uh, IRK. You mean that you want to do your master's in KICT and you want a co-supervisor supervisor from AHAS KIR KHS? Um, no, I was thinking to focus on political science. I want to learn political science mm -hmm. and then my uh -huh. research about political science, but then I want to implement technology in it. So that's the co-supervisor role. Yes, that is possible and that is welcome very much. Uh, what you can do, you discuss uh, first of all, when you uh, register your title, you will be given a supervisor and then you can discuss with your supervisor. Your supervisor can recommend this in the postgraduate committee meeting at the department. That is okay. possible. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Amina. Um, anyone else have any questions? All oh, right. Okay. There's a lot on chat. Right. Salam, doctor. Can I know the difference of schedule for master between full time and part time? From brother Mamat oh, Mirza. The schedule. Well, PG classes are scheduled at five p.m. until eight p.m. every day. Um. Okay. If um by right the time cannot be changed. By right, the time cannot be changed. But say, for example, if your instructor intends to change the time uh, on permanent basis, he should uh, first get the approval from the students and then secondly, notify the office. So the timetable can be changed officially. If he does not do that, that is illegal. You have the right to report to the DDPG office. You can see me and we will advise the lecturer to resume to the original schedule. Yeah, because we want to furnish and we want to um, assist the students who are enrolling on part-time basis. That's why the class starts at 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. But yes, there are times when we reschedule, but on temporary basis with the consent of the student. So remember, you have the right to have the class at 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Your, your lecturer is not supposed to change it without notifying the office uh, officially or request from the office to change the, super uh, change the time you know, officially. All right? Okay, there is one more question. Okay, madam. Uh, another question is from, uh, I think I can only allocate for one more question uh, from Brother Mama Izatir. Is that, um, Salam Dr. Sajidah, may I know if the student who graduated with CGPA 2.75 and below have the chance to pursue study in PG? Well, you can do that. Uh, you try to get a recommendation from one of your lecturers, uh, one of your lecturers who believe in your uh, credibility to postgraduate study. I do have that type of uh, enrollment from students with two, CGPA 2.75. So don't worry. Uh, undergraduate student this semester can apply. You can apply, I think, but uh, it may take time for the CPS office to process your application, especially if you are international student because they have student admission committee. I think for that, you need to refer to CPS. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, Thank you so much, my dear. Okay. Uh, one last master full time or part time. Yeah. Uh. I suggest that you do master full time so you can finish on time and you can think about your career faster. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I think that, that that's a that's an excellent advice. There, um, I think yeah. that actually we we haven't like uh we're supposed to have our next presenter be ready, but in the meantime, maybe this just one last question is that, um, from Sister Fatima, which is I might know if undergraduating uh, graduating undergraduate student this semester can apply for this year master October intake. Uh, 
uh, that's why I said just now by the Faiz, they can apply. Yeah. I think for local student to not so much problem uh, because uh, I think there are processes and procedures. When you apply, your application will have to go to Student Admission Committee, uh, SAC. So this, uh, I think this meeting is every month, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And um, when the SAC accepted you, I think the next procedures will ensure now. But for international students, this may be tricky because international students will have to apply for visa. And uh, for international students who are in the link, maybe you have experienced uh, this delay when you are dealing with the immigration department. So you can you can try to apply, sister. Uh, inshallah, for local students, I think most likely you will get it to enter the program in October, but for, for international student, I cannot guarantee. Yeah, maybe you can join next semester. All right. Um, Thank you so much. All I right. think there's no more questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Doctor, for presenting or for sharing about us about uh, how do I call this? Ahas Kirks. Uh, how, well, is there any other short form easier to pronounce? <laughs> okay, let's just say Ahas. Ahas K-I-R-K-H-S Okay uh, Ahas Okay thank, thank you so much madam um, right, Thank you so much Assalamualaikum Waalaikumsalam Okay everyone So um, in the meantime We'll still be waiting for um, Other lectures But I think like um, Since uh, Kulia of Education Is the representative From Kulia of Education This year Yes. Oh, okay. Dr. Dr. Fajaria. Dr. Oh. Moida, sorry. Oh, Dr. Moida. Oh, oh ma Madam, you said different. Uh, okay. All right. With that, I'd like to invite a um, representative from Kuliah of Education to kindly share with us. The, the floor is yours, Madam. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Brother Faiz. Is that your name? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Thank you very much for the introduction. So where do you want me to start? I'll just start introducing what uh, our Kulia is all about, right? Right, Kulia Yes, yes. <laughs> and so can I quickly know who are the uh, audience here? Sorry, I just came back from class. So basically, I believe, um, um, how many are students? If you may raise your hand. Uh, if you're students, can you raise your hand? Uh, prospective students. Okay, we have quite a number actually. <laughs> so never mind. So I assume that the students are here are the ones who are sort of uh, intent. Uh, they intend to come and join uh, IRUM, uh, but specifically here, if they are here in this breakout room for education, yeah? So let me welcome everyone to the, of course, Kulia for Education, and the acronym is for ED, and not ka ed yeah? ka ed will be architecture, <laughs> all right? Or ko e ko e will be engineering, all right? So basically, so this is the Kulia of Education. You can see uh, our building. Uh, actually, our building uh, is synonym to uh, the clinic of IUM. Where is uh, where is ko ed or is just, uh, above the clinic. So that's uh, the simplest way of giving a direction to our building actually, right? So basically, uh, I'm actually a uh, recovering uh, deputy dean uh, up to early of July. And actually the uh, deputy uh, dean for postgraduate is Dr. Masra Baziz and I'm Mr. Mohaida Mohin and uh, uh, our dean uh, currently is Prof. Dr. Norida uh, and uh, at our kulia, as you know as I said earlier the deputy dean of postgraduate is Dr. Masura who is currently in Japan and that's why I'm covering for her, her duties actually and the deputy dean for academic um, Office is actually Assistant Professor Dr. Suraya. Our Deputy Dean of Students Development is Dr. Wan Rusli, and our Deputy Director is Madam Azura. Okay, and um, you can see the heads of department for Social Foundation Education Leadership is Dr. Mera, and I am actually heading the Department of Language and Literacy, whilst Education Psychology and Counseling Department is headed by Dr. Nawati. 
And last but not least, uh, the, the fourth department under co-ed is actually headed by Dr. Abdul Shakur yeah, under curriculum and instruction. All right. So a bit of background information if you're interested in coming to the Kuli of Education. Uh, well, of course, we claim that we are one of the Malaysia's top education schools, yeah? Delivering a wide range of undergraduate and postgraduate courses. And the Kulia actually comprises of prominent scholars, uh, like, for example, the likes of uh, Prof. Rosnani, who has just retired. Uh, currently, we have Prof. Sahari and a few other names, yeah? Uh, who are actually uh, specializing in uh, various fields, yeah? So it is also a unique experience of an Islam integrated international program with an emphasis on comprehensive excellence. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, our rector is also interested yeah, because of uh, because we are the Kuli of Education. We are also in collaboration with not only the Ministry of Higher Education, but also uh, the Ministry of Education itself, uh, KPM, because uh, and the undergraduate uh, programs uh, needs uh, to tie to be tied up with the schools because of the practical experiences. Yeah. All right. So the Korea of Education actually was established yeah, as a very small department of education way back in July 1687. It was set because uh, to help assist in meeting the Malaysia's need for graduate student uh, teachers only. Uh, the first program that we offer was actually a diploma of education uh, to prepare teachers to teach in I cannot see <laughs> to teach in what <laughs> in secondary schools and the program began actually with 113 pioneer students and it offered uh, the first time it opens up uh, for ed of education or rather department of education it opened with the following specializations uh, Islamic education uh, actually famous for that Arabic language Malay language at that time but we don't offer it anymore uh, commerce and entrepreneurship and last but not least English language yeah especially the TASOL program with our um, undergraduate uh, program so in response to the need expressed by MOE uh, so that is our partner uh, in 1989 uh, this is where uh, the Masters of Education program was proposed and it concentrated in the main areas of teaching of Arabic to non-Arabic speakers, uh, teaching of Islamic education, teaching of Quranic education, educational administration, and guidance and counseling. So at that time, you don't see TESOL yet, all right? So this is the, um, the historical background. I could name it as historical background beginning in 1990. Sorry if I'm going too fast because I'm so excited about sharing the contents of what <laughs> with the rest of you. So the department, because it was a small department, uh, known as Department of Education, it was placed under KIRKH at that particular time in 1990. And in May 1997, uh, we began to offer a limited Bachelor of Education program in, as you see, it started out uh, as a program in Arabic language and literature first, yeah, for the teachers from the Ministry of Education. It was some sort of a top-down eh, top uh, kind of program. And then in 2003, we had a training program with MOE, see, as I mentioned, that's our partner, uh, to upgrade the qualification of the dead in-service teachers, eh, to teachers in schools and free service teachers to uh, uh, complete their bachelor degree. So the programs we offered at that particular time, at the beginning, was uh, were actually TASL, uh, then TASL, counseling, uh, moral education, and uh, another TASL for free service. So there were two TASL programs, so one for free service, the other one is for um, in-service uh, teachers. All right, then, uh, next, what comes next is, <coughs> uh oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so you can see that in 2007, what happens? We have the at Tesla, so it, it is actually growing. Yeah, uh, by July 12, uh, 2012, uh, there were four departments which were established. So prior to 2012, uh, it's just co ed by itself, there were no departments. Yeah, but as of 2012. Uh, the departments were actually established. So, in other words, 
our department is quite new yeah because it started in 2012 actually all right then of course uh, we strive to be uh, we strive for educational excellence to bridge educational theory and practice and to inspire the students to develop lifelong learning skills and practical knowledge yeah? and then we also actually um, base our foundation on the falsafa pendidikan uh, fpk kebangsaan uh, so and, and the director is also quite interested in that the, the philosophy behind education in malaysia so what is our vision? So the Kuliah's vision is to become a renowned Islamic center for education, be it nationally or internationally, and it is consistent with the vision of IIUM. Of course, we have to support the vision of IIUM. Yeah? And our mission is to produce dedicated researchers, scholars, educators to develop Islamic approaches in the construction of knowledge yeah? relevant with contemporary social cultural conditions and also to foster research and divorce in various fields of education. Hopefully, this particular research will contribute towards the development of the nation and the Ummah. All right. So the objectives of Quran is to develop and refine Islamic concept theory, practice and system of education. Having said that, you know, our ISEC program is very, very popular. Yeah? Very popular among one of the programs that, that is actually popular. Uh, to be able to produce successive, successive generations of Muslims who not only serve Allah faithfully, but also committed to follow Allah's guidance in all aspects of our lives. Yeah? And also be knowledgeable and skillful to bring benefits and to avoid harm to themselves, mankind, and the universe. So hopefully we can carry our objectives. Yeah? And the aims of uh, our um, kulia is, of course, to uh, have this following characteristics, uh, to be proactive, critical, creative, innovative, to be able to subscribe in total submission to the command of Allah. Of course, why? Because in line with IIUM being the garden of knowledge and virtue, yeah? to be committed to Allah's guidance in all aspects of their lives, be knowledgeable, uh, and skillful in applying various educational principles, techniques, and technology. And last but not least, uh, among others, to be able to carry out that are totally committed to the mission of developing and nurturing Islamic personality in our students. Uh, this is the most important part if you want to come to uh, our kuliah. Uh, because we have uh, the programs uh, in. Uh, uh, I mean, two actually two what way? Uh, two modes huh? under masters. So masters by coursework, a bachelor's degree in the field of related field with a minimum of CGPA of two point five zero or equivalent, as accepted by the senate. So that you can't run away from being able in, to to ensure that your minimum CGPA is actually accepted by the senate. Yeah? Uh, or a bachelor's degree in the field or related fields of equivalent with a minimum CGP of two. And because it doesn't meet the CGP of 2.50, it can be accepted subject to rigorous internal assessment. So in other words, that is not quite a shortcut. So uh, there will be some assessment done internally yeah, within the Kulia. Uh, last but not least, uh, the criteria is for candidate, candidates without qualification in the related fields or working experiences in the relevant fields must undergo appropriate prerequisite courses that are mean by the Senate and meet the minimum CGPA based on one and two, right? So by research, okay, masters by research, uh, you need to have a bachelor's degree in the field of related fields with a minimum of CGPA 2.75, which is actually uh, a bit higher than the earlier one uh, quoted for coursework and yeah? coursework is 2.5 yeah? but uh, by research is 2.75 and then a bachelor's degree in the field of uh, or related fields or equivalent with a minimum CGP of 2.5 and this one is also a bit higher than the earlier one which is 2.0 uh, and not meeting a CGPA of 2.75 can be accepted again subject to rigorous internal assessment 
Uh, another option is a bachelor's degree in the field of related fields of or equivalent with a minimum CGPA of 2.0, but not meeting a CGPA of 2.5. So in between, yeah, again, can be accepted uh, subject to rigorous internal assessment. And last but not least, candidates without a qualification uh, or relevant working experience must undergo certain prerequisite courses. Again, these courses are endorsed by Senate. Yeah. All right, next. In addition to the requirements that I have mentioned earlier, it is very important to also look at the language requirements, especially the English language, because this is the medium of instruction that we'll be using uh, in the kuliah. Yeah? Unless you are actually uh, majoring in Arabic, then uh, most likely Arabic will be uh, one of the medium of instruction here at the kuliah. So the language requirements, um, you need to have a minimum score for TOEFL, acceptable IBT, uh, and I think we can just go straight to the table. Yeah, uh, This is better for you to see. Now, if you want to go for Masters of Education teaching English as a second language, which is also one of uh, a very popular uh, PG program. Yeah? So these are the scores, all right? It will be 600 and the minimum IELTS seven. Uh, but if you're coming in with uh, our university's um, scoring, I mean, our university's exam, which is EPT, you have to have an overall bad score of 7.0. Uh, okay. And uh, for ta ta is it TANAS, Masters of Education Teaching for Arabic, uh, short form of learning is TANAS, T A N A S. Uh, so, of course, you can see that the minimum requirement for language is a lot, lot, uh, almost half of what is required if you want to um, enroll in a task TASL, eh? 3.0 as compared to 7. Okay, next. All right, if you're here, hopefully you can graduate and throw your, what do you call that, those hats eh? in the air. Okay, you go to... Um, Department of Educational Psychology first. Okay, if you want to uh, be a PG student of this particular department, uh, the department offers two programs: Educational Psychology and Guidance and Counseling. Guidance and Counseling uh, actually uh, is bonded with the uh, association under Pakama, uh, under the Pakama Association. So that one you cannot change the rules and regulations and certain certain requirements huh, because it's bonded with Pakama. Uh, okay. Uh, next uh, curriculum under curriculum instruction, you have uh, four programs, which are oh not four but teaching of uh, Islamic education three yeah? sorry three four uh, the PG uh, programs, sorry, PG programs on the curriculum instruction. You have three either you go for teaching of Islamic education, instructional technology, or curriculum instruction. As for Department of Social Foundation, there are also three different programs under Social Foundations of Education, Teaching Thinking, and Educational Management and Leadership. Frankly speaking, among the three programs, the most popular one is Educational Management and Leadership. That is the most popular one. Uh, in the past, um, we had a top-down uh, directive uh, whereby uh, the Ministry of Education sent in uh, the Guru Basar, uh, Guru Basar to, to enhance uh, their skills in this particular area. Okay, next. So this is the department that I'm heading. Uh, so we only have two programs, uh, teaching Arabic to non-Arabic speakers and uh, TESOL, teaching English as a second language. So uh, having said that, <clears throat> let's look at the Masters of Education uh, by coursework. So what do you need? So this is the program structure. Yeah? Basically for this and the coursework, there are two structures. So these are the structures. Uh, for A, at the end of the day, you have to produce a directed research upon completion for all the courses that you take here, yeah? as stipulated here. Uh, 
Uh, finally, you need to produce a directed research paper, which is about 40, 40, 30, 30, pages. 30, 30 pages only. 30 pages to uh, maximum, I think about 40 something, about 50. Huh? And that is uh, actually worth six credit hours. Yeah. Uh, the last one, the second one, uh, a research project. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, you produce a research project paper, which is which carries actually a track by the hours alone. Yeah. You can see the, the differences there. Okay. And the core courses that you have to go through uh, when you are a master student. Uh, number one is to be able to actually uh, get information, more information on research methodology because that's the key thing here. Yeah? And then, not just research methodology course that you have to sit, you also need to go for a qualitative research method course. So being in an Islamic university, we want you to also take courses in advanced history and philosophy of Islamic education. Last but not least, educational measurements and statistics. So this one are the core courses. All right. So another mode that we have is Masters of Education, but the research mode. Okay. So in this uh, research mode, these are the requirements. You have to uh, audit four core courses. And lastly, you need to have a dissertation. As for the Doctor of Philosophy in Education by Research, so we have here the main objectives. Yeah? Hopefully, uh, we are able to produce professionals in education that understand the principles and theories of Islamic education, able to translate them through research, instruction, and practice, and be able to contribute to the improvement and advancement of education. So the key word here is education. Yeah? And the requirements that you need to audit process because this is by research, so you just need to audit. Yeah, what is the meaning of audit? Meaning you have to be able to fulfill 80% of attendance, and then uh, no. eight, uh, but then you don't sit for the exam. But most of the courses you have exam, but papers, yeah. But most important is to fulfill that 80%. All right. So these are the courses you have to audit. Again, you can see statistics for educational research, qualitative research methods, and optimization of education. All right. Thesis. And last but not least, the thesis. This is what I have to teach. Okay, then, of course, our medium of instruction, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be English. That's why we need a very uh, high. Uh, score of English in test uh, in, in, from the EPT, from WEC, if not IELTS, if not TOEFL. Yeah? Uh, unless you are actually doing or taking up uh, the TANAS for Masters of Education, right? then uh, most likely it will be done in Arabic. So these are the data uh, of uh, students who graduated yeah? from 2003 to 2022. So, of course, PhD graduates are in the 300, uh, almost 400 here, and the master's graduate, uh, 1,000 plus. Uh, it's too bad that we can't share with you pictures of our alumni. Uh, we have renowned ones. But then again, yeah, I, just, I just walked into this as a covering deputy dean about a month ago. So, uh, on top of being a, 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 a head of department, so I wasn't able to actually find pictures of our alumni <laughs> members, yeah? So these are the graduate students, PhD and masters, international and national. Right? So you see, our PhD students come a lot eh, from international. So we're quite well known uh, in the international market. So any more information, you can just Google us, yeah, under Kulia, under IUF, Kulia, and then go ahead. Thank you for lending me your ears. If there are any questions, I'll try to answer them. If not, uh, my, my colleagues here will help answer them. Okay. Thank you so much, Madam, uh, for the. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> actually, like you, you finished just on time for the oh, next presentation. Good. Actually, <laughs> I have classes tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, so.
I hope that everyone here uh, who have uh, interest or maybe like you have any questions, uh, please do take note about uh, the contact number just now uh, so that you can relay the, uh, your questions to uh, co-ed. Co yeah, co <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor, for your time. Yeah, I have to leave. There's no question because I have to rush for class. Ah, uh, alright, alright. Okay. No question, yeah? Any question? Okay, it was almost the same. Uh, like, also, just asked when it was answered by Doctor Hasmina. I'm not mistaken, just now, yeah. Yeah, I, th <laughs> I think she. I think, I think. I think you. Your presentation has answered a lot of questions just now. <laughs> okay, alright. Uh, I think there's no question. Okay, so salam. Thank you so much, Doctor. Okay, everyone. So let's move on to the next session. Uh, we have a representative from the International Institute of Islamic Thoughts and Civilization, aka ISTAC. Uh, with that, I believe he is here. Uh, I would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Faham Muhammad Khalib to take the floor. Doctor? Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you hear me? Uh, clear, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, very good afternoon to all. Uh, and I would like to say welcome to our uh, potential <laughs> students of ISTAC, inshallah. Uh, we have several uh, on the top of uh, the uh, uh, what the, the, the academic as well as the uh, admin staff. Uh, they are also attending this session. So I'll be uh, presenting and sharing uh, the info related to ISTAC. Uh, I'll be uh, focusing on the one that we have uh, uploaded and updated uh, in the pavilion uh, platform uh, of our, uh, I think, portal, okay, promotion uh, portal. Uh, so, uh, I may now share my screen, uh, if I may. Uh, <clears throat> okay, there you go. Can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, ISTAC stands for International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization. And before that, I'm the Deputy Dean for Academic in ISTAC. In ISTAC, we have only postgraduate studies. Okay, we have master and PhD, and ISTAC is under the leadership of a uh, uh, professor, Dr. Abdul Aziz Barwood, as the dean of ISTAC, uh, starting from uh, end of last year up till now. Okay, so we are now under the leadership of uh, our dean, Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz uh, Barwood. Uh, if you can uh, access and then see our uh, pavilion uh, section of the stack, uh, we may now, uh, uh, if, if, if you can observe that the vision and mission of the stack, okay, the vision and, and mission of the stack. The vision is to be a world leading international center of Islamic learning and research. Okay, in the general field of Islamic thought and civilization and comparative cultural and civilizational studies that is dedicated to the renewal of human civilization. Uh, from the one stated here, if you may observe that the area is quite uh, vast. It covers a range of uh, different uh, specialties across Korea. Okay? It may include uh, human sciences based kulia as well as science based kulia. Okay, so we have uh, in ISTAC students from science based uh, background. We have also students uh, from uh, arts or human uh, science based uh, background joining us and doing master as well as PhD with us in ISTAC. Uh, that's the first one. And then we move to the mission of ISTAC is to produce a new breed of academics and scholars who are multilingual and multidisciplinary in their expertise and who possess sound knowledge and understanding of Islamic civilization and its eternal universal messages and who dedicate themselves to its advancement, not only for the benefits of the Muslim Ummah, 
but also for the rest of human humanity. The pictures uh, of what we, we observe uh, from the uh, uh, page itself, this is the uh, buildings of Istak. Okay, this is the building of, of Istak. Uh, it cover range of uh, facilities okay, that we have in Istak. I will go to the facilities later after this. Uh, okay, pertaining to the uh, specialization that we have in Istak, uh, we have again a range of specializations, okay, ranging from the first Islamic thought and civilization, uh, secondly, Islam and other religions, a comparative civilizational and cultural approach. Uh, thirdly, education and its institution in the Islamic world. Okay. Fourthly, Malay world Islamic civilization. You observe that Malay is one of the main agenda in its stack other than the Islamic and uh, cultural and uh, civilization. Briefly, we have gender and equity in Islam. The study of gender is also part of the uh, ISTAC interest. Okay, we have some research and studies conducted in this particular area of specialty. Uh, uh, number six, we have science, technology, and environment in Islamic civilization. This is where we have some students from science background joining us and doing pursuing master and PhD in ISTAC. Uh, we have uh, number seven, language, art, and literature in Islamic civilization. We also cover comparative uh, literature, comparing between Islamic literature as well as other uh, literature, uh, Malay literature and other uh, civilizational uh, literature that we have uh, in the world. We have number eight, Islam and Tajdeed in Islamic history and civilization. Uh, we have number nine, Ottoman civilization and the modern world. Okay, this is also our interest, the study, Ottoman studies on the top of Malay studies and other civilizational uh, studies. We have also uh, 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 taken into account other civilizations so that uh, they will be part of our uh, part and parcel of our specialization in, in stack. And lastly, we have economic, political thought, and institution in Islamic civilizations. That's why some of the studies we conducted in ISTAC related to Islamic finance and banking and Islamic economy because this is part of our specialization that we have in ISTAC. Okay, so that's the uh, as far as the specialization in ISTAC uh, are concerned, a uh, range of uh, specialties, if you observe, from the uh, stated. Uh, pertaining to our professors, uh, we have uh, a long list of professor, the one, uh, the prominent, uh, all stated here. Uh, we have Prof. Emeritus, Dr. Dr. Osman Baka, as one of the prominent professor in the field and known okay, in the uh, area. We have Professor Dr. Dr. Ahmad Murad, uh, American, uh, we have Professor Dr. Tamim Usama, uh, and then we have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Daniel, which is Professor Dr. Yusuf Imtiaz, Assistant Professor Dr. Ahmad Al Muhammadi, we have Dr. Wan Ali, and we have several other professors as well as academicians affiliated to us, working with us from other kuliah. Okay, we have several from uh, Islamic Reveal Knowledge and Human Sciences. We have uh, some of them uh, even from Kulia of Engineering, from Kulia of Science working with us, taking into account that the specialization that we have in this tech uh, uh, cover across the, the Kulia, okay? Uh, science as well as human uh, science-based uh, uh, interests. So those are uh, the, the specialization that we have in stack as well as the uh, experts that we have in stack and even affiliated with us. So any study forwarded and then uh, table in stack, uh, we may find uh, there is an expert, okay? Working not only with us, but with other kulia, okay? So we may find an expert uh, from different uh, kulias across that we have in IIM so that they will be able to working with us and then uh, focus on the interest, how 
the research area or the, the research that going to be conducted and proposed by the student uh, is, is related to uh, ISTAC, okay, area of studies on even niche area uh, that we have here in ISTAC. Okay, so uh, related to the uh, what we have from the from the uh, website, other than the specialization and the academician, which is not only the one stated, we have even more because there are academicians affiliated and working with us at the moment in order to expand, okay, the 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 area of uh, research as well as interest that we have in stack to not only uh, in stack but across all, all other uh, uh, kuliah in uh, the university. Even if you have some uh, research where we may have from uh, uh, supervision from outside that can uh, work and then collaborate with us, we may do so, we may facilitate, and we may uh, uh, allow the studies to be conducted uh, and parked in, in stack. That's uh, this, that portray how the level of flexibility that we have uh, in ISTAC uh, working uh, with us, a uh, long list of academicians and experts, so that the uh, target as well, vision and mission of ISTAC can be realized. Uh, uh, and then the benefit can be uh, uh, given not only to uh, uh, the IIM community, but to the UMA uh, at large. Uh, pertaining to the uh, programs, as I mentioned earlier, we have a postgraduate program only. Uh, we have uh, at PhD level and at master level. Okay? So at the uh, master level, uh, you may observe uh, from uh, our pavilion uh, section details about the uh, program of our master. We call it Master of Arts in Islamic Thought and Civilization. Uh, this is the uh, structure of the program uh, where the student uh, uh, have to register three audit courses. Uh, on the top of that, uh, they need to conduct a research okay, related to Islamic thought and civilization. The one that I have shared to you earlier, long list of specialization that we have in ISTAC. Uh, as for uh, PhD, uh, similar to a uh, uh, master program uh, from the uh, uh, sense that they have to uh, take in, uh, as audit courses, three, three audit courses. Uh, and then on the top of these three uh, audit courses, they have to uh, prepare and do research and do the documentation of the research in the form of thesis. Uh, related to uh, stack uh, specialization, as I shared to you uh, earlier. Uh, and then we have also a uh, supervisor and experts that will be uh, assisting the student, facilitating facilitating the, the, the study, okay, uh, and then helping the student in the, in the area of research that the student intend to intend to do. Uh, uh, so we have we in the pipeline we are we are uh, at, the, uh, at the moment planning to have a master of arts in Islamic thought and civilization uh, by mixed mode. Okay, the existing one that we have at the moment for master and PhD both by research. So in the pipeline we are also planning to have master in Islamic thought and in and, and civilization by mixed mode. Okay. So once it's ready, uh, probably by coming of uh, next academic year, by first semester, we'll have it ready and have it advertised uh, to the public uh, for those who are interested to do the master, the master program uh, by mixed mode uh, in the area of Islamic thought and civilization. You are almost welcome to join and, uh, uh, in the program and be with us in stack. That's the uh, postgraduate programs that we have uh, in, in ISTAC. As for the uh, facilities, okay, so this is uh, the, the facilities that we have in ISTAC. Uh, we have uh, uh, our, our library, uh, our library, uh, we call it SIMNA library, uh, stands for uh, Said Muhammad Nokaib Al Atas library, okay. Uh, this is the details of uh, some uh, uh, that we have uh, picture pertaining to the library, the collections, 
is a very uh, uh, is a library with a very rich collection, particularly the rare collection, as well as manuscripts. Okay, rare manuscripts. We have the collection, good collection of manuscripts, uh, along with other uh, references, rare references. Uh, we have those in. Uh, uh, in his stack, okay, in Syed Muhammad Nokeb Al Atas Library, okay, uh, we 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 welcome anyone uh, uh, with uh, uh, passion and interest studying some of the manuscripts that we feel need to be uncovered, that need to be uh, even studied, and uh, pinpoint what are the benefits from those which actually the 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 the. Uh, Okay, uh, thank you uh, for that uh, question. It's actually a very good question. So I guess the way I can answer this is there will be differences between the research base and the clinical base. So for the clinic available for the international student, I'm including the a local student, we don't actually give grant for clinical base studies, but for research base for the uh, huge, uh, apologies for the technical difficulties, everyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, someone accidentally um, closed the breakout room, so we're still waiting for uh, Doctor. Uh, okay, Doctor Beham. Apologies, Doctor Beham. <laughs> um, the, Why I've been kicked? <laughs> no, 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 no. The the breakout room was closed. Everyone was like moved to the main room because someone accidentally. Click, oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, Doctor, can I continue? Yeah, yeah, uh, you many, can continue. How many minutes left for me? Uh, <laughs> five, uh, you still have 10 minutes. Uh, I still have 10 minutes. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> it's all of the sudden. Sometimes I, I even I, myself shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I was surprised as well. <laughs> okay, okay. Seven minutes, sorry. Seven minutes. Okay. So all this right. is the uh, one of the main facility that we have in the stack. Okay. So the, the heritage need to be uh, uncovered by a uh, student of ISTEC. We have rich of information in ISTEC, in, in mainly the manuscripts and rare collection of books that we have in, in ISTEC. Okay, on the top of that, uh, we have also uh, the facilities, uh, of course we have, uh, pertaining to the, to the beautiful of uh, ISTEC building, that's the one that we uh, been uh, even mentioned by the public, even by all. So uh, the the architecture of a stack in terms of the uh, the boss Zabeda, we have different other facilities, classes. Okay, even the the uh, I mean the the stack scenery. If you uh, if you if you go there, you will see that the beautifulness of what we have in in a stack, and then the accommodation of of a stack. Okay, itself. Uh, we have accommodation that will uh, be able to, uh, 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 I mean, to, to provide facilities for those who need accommodation and stay with us in ISTEC. Uh, on the top of that, on the top of that, we have some uh, what we call assistantship as well as scholarship okay, in, in ISTEC. So for assistantship at the moment, uh, we have what we call ISTEC scholarship and a scholarship and citizenship where we open uh, the advertisement for uh, this particular citizenship or, or, or scholarship to the uh, public. Uh, so those who, who need their study to be uh, I mean funded. Uh, well, of course, a limited number of seats available, but we have, uh, I mean, this is uh, assistant in place for those who want to pursue master as well as PhD, we have a way, uh, I mean, a, a channel where we may uh, assist and help you realizing uh, your, uh, your, your, what, your, your wish or your ambition to pursue study at master as well as PhD level 
especially in in this tag. This is actually open for those who want to study in this tag. Uh, you can apply and then uh, fulfill the necessary criteria and provide the necessary documents, offer letter and the rest. And we may uh, evaluate and do the filtration eh, accordingly, selection eh, accordingly. Uh, another scholarship, which is mainly for uh, the locals. Uh, I'm very uh, sorry for those from international brothers. Eh? For, the, for the local, we have dedicated excellent scholarship for the local. The reason why we mention here local, because the funding is actually from uh, the Malaysian government meant for local students. Uh, we have 10 seats altogether, uh, uh, but, but it, it may gradually distribute it for those who are uh, eligible uh, across uh, uh, more than one semester, most probably. You will see how the application that we receive from the public. But uh, it's actually for the full scholarship, eh? full funded, uh, uh, I mean, study, PhD as well as master, we call it ISET, Scholarship Fund for Excellent Students. Okay, if you want to join us and be with us, please do so for the application, provided that you are have been categorized as excellent students. Okay, excellent achievement in your master or as well as your uh, BA uh, degree, uh, you are almost welcome to be with us, join us, and have your study funded. Okay, uh, by the uh, ISTAC in, in by ISTAC in, in in particular. So uh, these two uh, are actually. Uh, assisting students, the 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 uh, the existing student as well as new student want to join us, as well as excellent student who want to be with us and venture the mission and vision that we are uh, having at, at the moment related to Islamic thought and civilization. The existing student as well, we we offer with uh, some sort of like essential, uh, like partial essential uh, for for them to. Uh, to I mean, to, to apply, and then uh, I mean to to have the uh, partially uh, the study funded by by ISTEC, but that would be uh, as uh, uh, we have do we have need to do the filtration, we need to do the uh, selection so that we can assist the one who really needed and really urgently uh, I mean uh, needed from from assistance from us uh, and then having. Uh, problem financially in funding the, 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 the study. Uh, that's as far as the uh, essential as well as scholarship uh, concern and how we can assist our students in particular at master and as well as PhD level in stack viewing into uh, uh, I mean the, the importance of uh, uh, progressing the Ummah, helping and assisting the members of this Ummah uh, in order to be, uh, I mean, uh, with advancement okay, in, in, in future uh, and holding the similar vision and mission that we have in, in this tech. Uh, on the top of that, of course, pertaining to activities, uh, you may view that from our uh, uh, pavilion uh, section, a uh, long list of uh, pictures okay, of our activities as well as our videos. Okay? Uh, related to webinar, related to community engagement, related to workshop. Uh, even for the publication, research and publication, we have also some pictures as well as some videos okay, from our ISTAC TV uh, website or channel uh, on YouTube. You may check, you will see that long list of materials available there related to ISTAC uh, research and publication. Of course, we are also known uh, in organizing webinars, seminars internationally and uh, locally related to Islamic thought and uh, civil civilization. Uh, we, you are almost uh, uh, welcome to join us. Uh, please uh, forward your application. We will do the necessary in terms of the uh, requirements, almost similar to different other programs we have in this tech. In terms of the background, we have from human science uh, based background as well as science based background. We welcome all okay, to be with us, join us in our stack program, master as well as PhD. If you need our assistance financially, please do so. Browse through the information that we have from the pavilion because we have there. 
in Pavilion chapter of uh, Stack, and we have also some of the information available on Stack website. Okay, you may check those information from Stack website as well. So uh, I think with with that we welcome. Okay, we welcome for you to be uh, in the bandwagon of Islamic thought and civilization in Stack, and do for the purpose of progressing the Ummah and having the Ummah uh, and then elevating the Ummah to a better position, uh, not only uh, in the past, okay, and uh, what we may observe from the past, but currently and of course in future. I think with that, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you and back to the uh, Secretariat. If there are any questions, we are, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer uh, and reply, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Any question from the floor or else we'll move on to the, ne the next session? I think like uh, it's, uh, or, or you may actually visit this at pavilion.iem.edu.my. I believe like you are able to uh, view it still. Yeah, I think that, that there's still that, the, the booth is still that, it's still accessible for the public. Uh, Again, apologies for the technical <laughs> issues just now. <laughs> it was quite a surprise as well. <laughs> we were also quite surprised. Uh, but nevertheless, I think if there's no question, then we'll move on to the next session. Thank you so much, Dr. Fea, for Thank you. Uh, Thank the you. sharing session. I hope that every, um, a lot of people will join. It start soon. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, let's move on to a uh, session with the Kulia of Languages and Management, KLM. For, uh, with that, I'd like to invite Assistant Professor Dr. Shamsul Amri Abdul Latif. Uh, the floor is Sirs. Is that there? All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I hope you are doing okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, my name is Amsul Amri. I'm from the Kulia of Languages and Management. So uh, today I'll be presenting uh, to you a little bit on our background. Um, my presentation is very um, uh, straightforward and simplistic. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask me. And uh, if you want to browse through, I can show you uh, where or otherwise you can always go to the uh, site that um, Mr. Faiz uh, just uh, told us about, uh, the pavilion. Okay, um, our, I'm just, just hold on here. Yeah. Okay, our Kulia was established um, in 2012 and we, we were operationalized in 2013. Uh, I believe we are the currently the youngest uh, kulia in IUM. We only have um, uh, our, our numbers are small, but uh, it is growing. <clears throat> we are situated in uh, Pago, Johor, and um, we are within the Edu Hub, um, uh, Edu Hub uh, um, enclave, uh, whereby we have uh, other universities uh, as well. Uh, in our area. So just uh, some ideas uh, about where we are. We are about uh, 30 kilometers away from uh, Moa, uh, but uh, that is not a hindrance. It's not, it's not an issue. Uh, Pago is self-sustaining. Uh, we can uh, actually get whatever we need in, in the town in Pago itself. Okay, going back to... Um, <clears throat> Okay, this is how our campus looks like. If you can see uh, behind here, uh, there is development going on. Uh, currently, it is already, um, I would say, 70% complete. So you won't see this, uh, uh, you know, dark, uh, this, this brown thing here, but uh, rather buildings. And we have more plants, and the plants are uh, getting uh, bigger and bigger every day. So it's a nice campus, it's a new campus. Uh, the facilities are top notch. Uh, we have a lot of uh, facilities uh, to assist uh, our education and uh, to enhance the experience of the students and uh, educators. So uh, in terms of leadership, we have Dr. Muhammad Azrul Azlan, uh, he's the Dean, um, and myself as the uh, 
uh, Deputy Dean for Research and um, PG. We also have Dr. Miro for Students Development and Dr. Cheryl Nizam um, for the academic, uh, um, uh, academic issues. Uh, our vision is to, be, to become the center for excellence for language, for professional and communication and tourism. And our mission is to produce quality intellectual and professionals through knowledge enhancement, research and practice in the field of language and tourism. Our strategic direction is to commit in producing future workforce with a balanced personality, as well as high competency and consciousness of the world's well-being. So in our Kuliam, we have four um, main department which is the English language department, Arabic language, and the Malay language. And we also have the uh, Department of Tourism with us. Um, we also have the General Studies Unit where we put um, our developing uh, um, uh, programs under this. Um, as you know, we are, um, are looking at becoming the, the one-stop center for language. We also have uh, other languages in the pipeline uh, such as Korean, uh, Mandarin, and many more in the pipeline. But it is, of course, it, it takes a little bit time to develop all these uh, languages into a proper program. <clears throat> uh, this is our current program uh, in terms of uh, postgraduate. We have um, two uh, for each levels, master and uh, PhD level. Um, <clears throat> I'll just go to this one. Yeah, I'll just show you the uh, video here. So can you like increase the volume or something? Sorry, the, the, the volume? Ah, eh? oh, yeah, it's a bit slow. <laughs> It's already maximum picture. Oh, okay, okay, it's okay, alright, okay. because of the comprehensive curriculum that I'm happy with, but it's also because of the lecturers uh, who are very supportive and helpful. They always encourage us to be creative and independent in our studies. The curriculum design resonates with my needs as an ESP instructor. I'm now becoming more equipped in terms of planning for course, current syllabus, delivering a variety of teaching methods, creative in my teaching materials, as well as evaluating my course for continuous improvement. Okay. So that, uh, so. Okay, so that is some background of what our programs are about. And um, basically what, what languages for specific uh, purposes is the knowledge to enable students to use languages in a particular speech community. As you see in the examples, um, specific uh, languages are needed in 
you know, very specific areas. It can be in medical, it can be in construction, it can be in development, and can be in any industry. So this is where we, we come in. And we hope by doing this, we accomplish, um, you know, developing and honing specific uh, needs driven skills that are required by the communicative uh, competence. Um, so um, this covers uh, the English parts as well as the uh, uh, Arabic part. So um, both um, driven by the needs of the industry. Okay, so we advocate teaching for adults, adult learners. Um, it is industry related context and we push for uh, competency in languages. So it covers uh, English as well as uh, Arabic. So our program, as, uh, as I said earlier, we have two currently at a master's level, master's of arts in teaching English for specific purposes and Masters of Arts in Teaching Arabic for specific purposes. So these are the, the courses for our master's program. We have two for uh, required courses under the university, and we have two uh, core courses, which looks at the principles of applied linguistics, as well as the teaching methods. Uh, and then we also have uh, specialized courses where we looked at um, material de development in language teaching in the ESP or ASP. And we also have a uh, course design, professional discourse. And finally, we have uh, issues. Uh, we look into issues um, concerning ESP as well as ASP. Uh, other than that, we also have um, electives, which you can choose from. And finally, our research, uh, our dissertation part, which takes uh, 15 credit hours. So um, equally uh, similar, uh, our PhD uh, course, we only have two uh, at this moment. We are still developing this. It's in the pipeline. Um, uh, the specialization is um, for specific purposes uh, for both English and uh, Arabic. So it takes about three years to complete this uh, course. Okay, this is some um, some the, the, the course related to masters. So it's about 2,000 uh, for relations and about 6,000 for international uh, students. I'm sure all these uh, figures are available in, uh, in uh, the internet, I, I just did a quick Google. So um, the information are there. Um, you can just do a quick Google and you can find the PDF uh, with very specific uh, um, uh, fees and payments. So uh, for our future PG program, uh, as I said earlier, um, since we also have Department of Tourism with us, so we are developing and, and we are at the, towards the end of uh, receiving the approval to have this program um, in place. So it's just a matter of time. Uh, we look, uh, we are looking at uh, about next year to have this program, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to, I mean, to go on, to start, sorry. So um, that covers uh, tourism as well as Malay studies. Uh, okay, I'll just show you a little bit on the uh, facilities we have here. Uh, we have postgraduate lounge here, uh, whereby postgraduate students can use this lounge to do their, their assignments, their write, and even to socialize, to talk, and to discuss with each other. <clears throat> we also have shared facilities. Uh, we share facilities like swimming pools and, and um, many other facilities with other universities, but it's not a problem with it, to us. Uh, we are allocated with a proper uh, enough. Um, I mean, uh, it can be used by our students without any problems. Uh, equally, we also have uh, library shared facilities. It's very, very new. It is very, very comfortable. And our learning environment is well equipped with uh, latest technology, so it is very conducive. 
Okay, this is our accommodation, uh, which is just a walk away from our, our uh, campus. It's just about five minutes walk from where we are. Uh, if, if you don't really want to walk, it is okay. You can always take a, a bus, which is available. No problem there. Okay, so these are some of the facilities uh, we, we share with other um, universities uh, located in Eduha. Um, we also have the field, we have the swimming pool, uh, futsal center, hockey, rugby field, uh, you name it, it's, it's there. We also have the multi-purpose hall, the auditorium, guest house. So we are well equipped here and, and it's not an issue um, of not getting a proper facility for learning or experiencing as students. Even if it's a postgraduate level, these are uh, these facilities are very very important. Okay, um, just for your information, um, we, we um, have currently about seventeen students, postgraduate students. Um, in comparison to other Kulia, uh, yes, our numbers are very small, but we are looking at uh, increasing our numbers by you know welcoming uh, more students to come over and uh, experience. Uh, Pago yourself. Um, in terms of uh, expertise, we have um, enough expertise with us uh, to guide in your studies and as well as your research. Um, uh, if you check out our website, you will be able to see um, our, uh, our academician with their specialization. So you can actually approach them uh, if you want to know more. Um, <clears throat> Additionally, um, you can also look at, um, you can contact us at this number. Sorry, the number is not here. Um, you can go to our website. Uh, there's um, our office general number there. You can also contact us if you need further information. Um, I'm sure if you look at um, the pavilion, uh, which we provided earlier on, uh, the information um, there, should be able to help you to decide uh, uh, on your, your entry with KLM here. Okay, I think uh, that is all for me. Um, do you have any questions that you would like to know? If you have any questions, please do unmute yourself or perhaps put it in your chat box. Chat box. Anyone? You may raise your hand if you want to unmute. Pago is a very, very interesting place, actually. Uh, actually, uh, the, there, there was a question in regards to uh, that's the participant who is interested in doctoral degree communication. Is it somehow involved in this kuliah? Or is uh, there any courses in this kuliah that's closest to it? Is that master's in clinical psychology? Uh, no, I'm afraid oh, no, not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid not. Our, our specialization are more towards uh, languages. As I said earlier on, we are developing other programs. Uh, what we have in our pipeline is uh, including translation. So translation is another program that we are developing. So I hope that would be a, a, an area that that would you know create greater interest among uh, mm. our students, uh, UG students. I see. Uh, anyone else have any questions? Anyone? Uh, uh, about the recording, uh, I think that's something that uh, I, I will have to confer with the technical team later. Um, but I'm not sure about your problem there, Mr. iPhone. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not sure how to settle that problem. Uh, anyone else have any questions in regards to Kulia of Language or Management? Uh, so, so like, I, I think like... Um, I believe like people from other kuliah can also enter, join your join the kuliah as well, right? Yes, yes. As long as no problem. Is there any like minimum pointer? Uh, uh, uh the 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 requirements are all uh, stated in the uh, pavilion. Um, uh, pavilion, pavilion, yeah. Pavilion. So okay. uh, I I think it is almost similar to most uh kuliah in terms of languages. It's slightly above. But in terms of pointer, it is not so obvious. Um, yes, uh, we welcome uh, other students to, to come. 
uh, our students are mainly uh, for the time being uh, majority are working working people uh, but uh, having said that there are also um, you know uh, our former undergraduate students who decided to pursue in that in our direction so um, we, we have the, about two or three students from Arabic and uh, English language um, from the undergraduate level and they decided to pursue that postgraduate doing their masters. Alhamdulillah, they are doing well. Uh, they are doing well. Inshallah, we will also, um, you know, uh, offer them PhD if they decide to, to pursue further on. All right. Um, I have to to Mr. iPhone. Uh, I think like we'll ask the technology. I say the, the technical team later about the recordings for human science program. Mm -hmm. Um, if anyone don't have any question uh, for Kulia language management, uh, you may unmute yourself or you put in chat box. Or if not, I will move on to the next session. Anyone? Thank you. Okay, there's, there's no question. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much for sharing with KLM. I think like we've never I've never been to Pago actually. So looking forward. <laughs> you come and visit us. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Um I'm sorry, Mr. Iphone. Uh we still like um uh, the, the session had already passed and like uh, the deputy dean has already left the meeting so i think you have, have anything uh, you can join the you can look at the pavilion .edu my link that i've just give and then you may communicate with kulia of human science there lah. all right now without oh, further ado tadi oh, kamu so, <laughs> okay I, I think like um, harun hashim law center is quite enthusiastic <laughs> for the session um, uh, for today, we're going to uh, since uh, uh, Harun Hashim Law Center the representative, uh, Dr. Zuraida, will uh, also cover for Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws as well. So, without any further ado, I'd like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Zuraida Haji Ali from Harun, Hash Harun M. Hashim Law Center to take the floor. Madam? Thank you very much, Brother Nakib. Uh, and the excitement is because I have to wear two hats. <laughs> and I think what I'll do first is that I will be uh, uh, sharing a briefing on the program offered by Ahmad Ibrahim Kulaf Law. And also after that, uh, I will be sharing the program that we offer at Harun M. Hashim Law Center. We are actually siblings eh, uh, of a different nature. I will explain to you later. All right, let me share the slide. Okay, we can see the slide. All right. Okay, we'd like to welcome all of you to Ahmad Ibrahim Kulaf Law. And let me just uh, share why I call this is a short name uh, for Ahmad Ibrahim Kulaf Law, should be your preferred choice. Okay, um, I think the, uh, the MC can also help me on that, on this, because alumni of I call as well. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, basically what we offer at ICOL is the LLB program, that is Bachelor of Law. Okay, so way forward for those who graduated uh, with LLB from Ahmad Ibrahim Kula of Law, they can either enter into legal practice by doing nine months chambering. They can also join judicial legal service. They can, uh, judicial legal service meaning to say they can either join the Attorney General Chambers, AGC, and they can also be absorbed into judiciary either becoming magistrate, eh, um, BCA, and also uh, another choice, a few other choices, they can be in as a legal advisor in a firm or company, and definitely academic. But I think uh, more than 30 years we have been in existence, our graduates are everywhere, in every field. Eh? Even you can find some of our graduate choose a very noble uh, profession, such as uh, not only uh, as lecturers, but also as an educator at uh, schools, either secondary or primary school. Okay, whatever you choose, I call is always ready to welcome you. 
Okay, and uh, I think it's wise for us to first share uh, Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Law is the first kuliah to be established in IIUM together with Kuliah of Economic and Management. So its inception started in 1983 and the vision is to be the premier law school with the highest standard of intellectual excellence. Okay, for those of you who are very near, the picture on my right is the late, the founder uh, of Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Law, the, the Almarhum, Professor Ahmad Ibrahim. Okay, and the mission is to produce balanced graduates through a harmonized approach of teaching and learning and conventional law. So we have integrated system whereby we, we teach our students both civil law and also Sharia law. All right, in I call, we have three departments. We have Islamic law department, civil law department, and legal practice department. And the teaching and learning actually are actually done in two languages that is English and Arabic, because uh, at the undergraduate level, we also offer uh, not only Bachelor in Law, but also the double degree, which is known as Bachelor of Sharia, eh? meaning to say you do your four years of LLB, you extend another year of your LLBS. Okay, that's why in LLBS, for example, languages, are, uh, the language taught are solely Arabic. We have 89 teaching staff. Eh, so we need to say when we talk about when you study, you are studying with the expert. And we have currently 266 postgraduate students, either master or PhD. And they came from all over the world. Eh? So you can study in international and multicultural environment with students and staff from all over the world. So we're not talking about having international students only, but we also have number of international uh, staff, academic staff. Okay, if you're talking about career prospect, uh, if you were to study or if you were to pursue your study in uh, I call, it is to become internationally oriented, professional, well qualified for career in international organization. You can enhance your legal career and you can fill um, various expert position in the public, private, and as well as in academic, and both in Malaysia and also abroad. Uh, just a sharing, um, a, a sharing session that I had uh, in January, I, I happened to visit Maldives for some educational trip. So we met a number of our alumni in uh, Maldives and they happened to be holding top position at the legal offices. Eh? So you can find some at the Attorney General's office, prosecution office, at the judiciary office, and I think two of our graduates were current are currently the high court judge. Okay, so we are actually uh, can you can find uh, I, I call alumni everywhere around the world. Okay, um, when we talk about um, our postgraduate program, the MCL program and I call provide eligibility for a doctoral program as PhD to a PhD holder. So there are various uh, opportunity open for a career as legal academic or other position, either in public or private university. And it cover not only local, but also overseas. Okay, so you can see that we have a number of our notable alumni, okay, beside the fact that I've shared on a number of notable alumni that we had in Maldives. Okay, uh, locally, for example, we have Professor Dr. Zuhaira Arif, who is currently the Deputy Vice Chancellor in NISA. Uh, if you were to look around, uh, most of the uh, deans of the law school, either in UUM, Dr. Ruhaina, uh, in UKM, okay, Dr. Zaidi, uh, in UITM, Dr. Hartini, these are all our uh, notable alumni. Okay? And in the business center, for example, there are a few number, but to name one, the current CEO of CI CIMB Islamic. And uh, as far as judiciary concerned, we have a number of uh, GCA, uh, and also court of appeal judge. One of the court of appeal judge is Yang Arif uh, Hamid Sultan Abu Bakar. And we have also a number of uh, our alumni who has been appointed as GCA. Okay, let us focus on the postgraduate program at Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Law. Why? Yeah. So basically we have two main postgraduate program. That is one is Master of Comparative Law. And the other one is PhD. Doctor of Philosophy in Law. So when you talk about MCL, the short form for Master of Comparative is MCL. 
So this is to increase and deepen your understanding of key field of law and learn to compare them in the Islamic system. So basically, uh, candidates of MCL will be able to specialize in not only Islamic law, Malaysian, but also Malaysian law, and they are able to engage in the comparative study of specific law in several jurisdictions. Okay, and they can they are also uh, be able to develop analytical, legal argumentation, and also communication skill. And our PhD program, on the other hand, okay, when you have your MCL, this provides general eligibility and solid foundation for a doctoral study. And PhD program at I call is through research only. So this is where it will provide students with opportunity to do their research, writing, and also presentation skill. Okay, so the uh, structure of our MCL program. So we have a combination. We have all the three modes. Eh? We have the mixed mode. We have the coursework and also full research. Okay, and if you talk about full research, there are two compulsory subjects that students need to take together with thesis. You talk, if you talk about coursework, you need to do 40 credit hours that consists of eight subjects. And if you were talking about MCL in mixed mode, students are required to take six subjects with 30 credit hours and also one dissertation. So you can look, you can have a look at if you want more information on the program, you can go to the website as stated in the slide below. All right, these are the courses offered for coursework and also mixed mode. And you can choose out from it. Definitely law research methodology is one of the comparative. So depending on, on what niche area that you want to go about. Eh? So, and the entry requirement uh, for language, we expect TOEFL of 550, IELTS band 6. For thesis writing, similar, but for IELTS, uh, we require band 6 and 5.5, eh? a, bit, a bit lower. If you don't have IELTS, I think the normal requirement, the same with other PG program at other the faculty or kuliah, you can take your EPT. Okay, and compulsory courses, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you need to take a law research methodology and also one subject of comparative law. Okay, so this is the most, if you talk about our MCL program, most advanced, because it's basically focused on a uh, law program. MCL requires um, an admission from someone who has not only, not only LLB, but also Bachelor in Sharia, okay? And purely research-based, and it focus on arts and social uh, legal. And you, are, you will be exposed to rigorous research and discussion, written and also writing and also presentation, okay? And what will be awarded to you after submission of thesis, you, you will be awarded with MCL, and you, if let's say for thesis writing for research, you need to be you you need to be able uh, to finish and successfully defend your viva uh, uh, viva in your viva defense. Yeah? All right, require one. Uh, there are also other requirement for writing thesis, where, whereby uh, for Sharia base uh, we require English or Arabic. Okay, depending on the thesis, because you are allowed to write your your thesis in Arabic, and definitely a uh, law research methodology. It's a compulsory uh, course that you need to take. There's a typo there. And students are required to publish two articles. Okay, and this is the for uh, our PhD. Okay, this is the most advanced form of PG program at ICOM. And this is exclusively thesis based. What the uh, candidates are required to do, they need to prepare a viable research proposal in accordance with the guideline and format as prescribed by the, by the CULIA. And the degree is awarded on the successful completion of supervised research and assessed by, by a thesis and by VAR examination. And the entry requirement for uh, admission to PhD in law is that we require English language as entry requirement, band six. You need to take one compulsory course that is law research methodology for one semester and also the publication of two articles. I'm not going to go into detail, but you can find the detail in the website. Okay, so it's research area of your choice. So usually what we advise you to do is that you need to come up with at least a simple research proposal. So that this is where uh, I think members of ICOL or even the PG 
uh, you need will ass will assist you. Eh? Uh, if you want to submit it, and will will recommend it. Your the proposed supervisor will will look for the uh, proper person that are able to supervise your your research. So because it's a research area of your of your choice, not of your supervisor's choice. Eh? Okay, and study with expert. We have a, a number of uh, expert uh, on on all kinds of law. Eh? The current uh, dean of the postgraduate uh, center, center of postgraduate study, Professor Ida Madiha, is an expert in intellectual property. Okay, we have uh, Professor Ni Ahmad Kamal, constitutional and administrative law. We have Prof Najiba, well well known. Eh? He's, he's currently the member of Court of Appeal in Terengganu, uh, who is an expert in family law and women's rights. So you can find. Number of it, Prof. Nimi, Prof. Prof. Putri Nemi, for example, Medical Law and Ethics, Prof. Nora, ADR, and Prof. Gafur and other, our Prof. Gafur, who is an expert in international law. And to name a few, okay, this can be found, you can find it um, uh, in the website with area of expertise and also sub area of expertise, depending on the research of your choice. Okay. All right, this is the fee. You can have more detail on the tuition fee at the website. Okay, uh, and of course, we are uh, talking about value now. Eh? So it compares, it has to be measurable, but the, the coursework, the, 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 fee, uh, the fee that we offer is actually for value because you are studying with, with the expert. Okay, let us look into um, duration of study. So for MCL, Okay, uh, you can do it either full-time or part-time. So full-time, for example, minimum two semester for full-time, maximum six semester. And if you are doing it for normal, for normal semester, four semester for full-time. And if you're doing it part-time, and mind you, part-time is only allowed for local students, called local candidates. Eh? Uh, minimum period will be four semester, maximum period will be 10 semester. And then the normal period usually, Eight semester, and in the case of a uh, PhD in law, as well, eh, we have part time and full time, and part time is only offered to local candidates. Okay, minimum uh, period will be four semester for full time, maximum will be twelve semester, six semester for normal period, and as far as part time is concerned, minimum period will be six semester, sixteen semester for maximum period for part time to do their PhD in law. And normal period will be 12 semester. Okay. So for further inquiry, you can always go to iCall's website. We have PG admission at iCall either at iium.edu at my. Okay. And also you can call the number provided. Okay. And we have uh, basically three intake September, um, and we have November. February, sorry, February intake and also June. Okay, and everything, everything. I think CPS website is very accurate. You can uh, have it there or can go to ICOR website as well. Okay, this is the uh, intakes. Okay, you can uh, also contact Office of uh, Deputy Dean, PG. And the current Deputy Dean of Postgraduate and Responsible Research at Ahmad Ibrahim Kula of Law is Dr. Majdah Zawawi. Okay, so do join us. And I think uh, we have a video, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, do we have? Uh, it's okay, madam. I think that like, we can focus, uh, go to Harun Hashim now. Because, like, okay, thank you. Yeah, you have another 10 minutes, right? <laughs> it's not fair, you know. I'm representing two centers. Uh, yeah, yeah. No? Uh, we should wait, give uh, it some I, time. I am academy. Can we uh, give another five minutes <laughs> to Harun Hashim? Five minutes? <laughs> Extra okay, five. Very, very quickly. <laughs> I'm going to do okay. very quickly. Okay, Harun, Harun and Hashim Law Center is a center that I'm currently uh, holding, uh, managing. Okay, this was established in 1997. Okay, what's the difference between Harun and Hashim Law Center and also uh, I call is that we offer unsubsidized program. So in iCall, we have MCL. In Harun M. Hashim Law Center, we have um, LLM, eh, Master of Law. So the center was named as Harun M. Hashim Law Center in rem remembering, remembrance of uh, the, um, the late Tan Sri Harun M. Hashim, who is the first director of uh, Agency of Corruption. 
former Supreme Court judge, and he will happen to be the dean of ICOL as well back in 1996. Okay, so basically the postgraduate diploma that we offer uh, MLLM, and also we have two postgraduate diploma, which was actually uh, introduced earlier in 1990s by the late Almarhum Professor Tan Sri Ahmad Ibrahim. And basically this is to enhance the, uh, the quality of uh, Sharia uh, officer and also those who wants to practice at the Sharia court. That is diploma in administration of Islamic judiciary and also diploma in Sharia uh, and legal practice. So we have four LLM uh, program, Master in Administration of Islamic Law, Master in International Law, we have Master in Islamic Banking and Finance, and also we have Master in Business Law. Okay, and the difference between the program at ICOL and also in Harun M. Hashim Law Center is that we take both full-time and part-time, but we have three intakes per year. So if let's say you wish to do your full-time program of LLM, you are able to finish the whole program within a year. Okay, uh, three of the courses, that is LLM in international LLM in business law, internet uh, Islamic banking and finance, and also administration of Islamic law. Students are required to complete ten courses. Eh? Uh, but for LLM in international law, you are required to complete twelve courses. And on the top of that, LLM in international law, there are three sub specialization. Okay, all right. The, similarly, yeah, uh, duration of time three trimester. Each trimester will have twelve weeks uh, of classes. All right, you can have a look at the structure in our website. Since Faiz was saying that I don't have time, so I have to go very quickly. Okay, this is our postgraduate diploma. We have two postgraduate diploma with different entry requirements. Eh? So diploma in administration of Islamic judiciary, this is for those who already have their bachelor in Sharia and they wish to practice or to become officer at the Sharia court. Okay, for diploma uh, in Sharia, yes. Uh, we don't see your, Do you, are you presenting? I am presenting. Oh, we don't see your presentation at the moment. Can you see it now? No. I'm not sharing yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no problem, Madam. Anyway, you have ex no, you don't have five minutes. I'm asking for them to give another extra five minutes. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so I have time. Uh, la. You have time. You have time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay. okay. All right, so this is a postgraduate diploma that we have beside the, the four LLM. So I don't know slide, so I go back very quickly. Lah. These are the four LLM programs that we have. Uh, administration, IOIL, in Islamic law, international law, Islamic banking and finance, and also in business law. Okay, and beside the four LLM program that we have, we also have the two postgraduate diploma program. And the, the, the special thing about this postgraduate diploma program is that they are being held in the language used is Pasa Malaysia. Okay, because this is meant for those who are interested to become uh, a Sharia officer at the Sharia court eh, for diploma in administration of Islamic judiciary. Uh, the basic requirement is you need to have bachelor of Sharia from any university, be it local or, or, or overseas uh, university eh, such as Azhar, Jordan, Indonesia, etc. Okay, for diploma in Sharia and legal practice, this is a professional requirement eh? for those who wish to be to practice at the Sharia court they need to have the SLP so the the requirement is that you need to have your LLB okay bachelor of law if, uh, from any local university such as UITM UM UKM UUM UNISA eh? but if let's say you have your LLB from uh, overseas okay let's say you have you see London Australia and whatnot there's an, a requirement for you to have your uh, CLP, Certificate of Legal Profession. You need to, to have that before you can take Diploma in Sharia and Legal uh, Practice. So basically, we have two routes. Eh? Uh, if you are interested to enhance your profession as a Sharia officer or a Sharia lawyer. Okay, the structure of the program, you have we have uh, part-time and full-time for the age, the, the Diploma in Administration of Islamic Judiciary. And all students are required to take 11 compulsory courses and the minimum uh, requirement for a graduation is 2.5 and as far as the SLP is concerned this is only offered uh, part-time because most of the takers or our students happen to be practice practitioner lawyers who are practicing uh, at the civil court and they want to enhance the, their profession to cover their, their practice in the Sharia court 
So that's why they need to take the SLP and we offer it only part-time. Okay, that is full-time three trimester. Uh, and if you taking full-time classes, then uh, classes are being held with days. Okay, uh, and if you're taking the age part-time, the duration is five trimester, and students are required to take two courses in each semester. These are the, basically the program, uh, 11 courses. Uh, the requirement for the age is that you have to have Bachelor of Sharia because one of the courses that are taught out of the 11 courses taught, text undang-undang are being taught in Arabic. Okay, other, other than that, other, other 10 courses are in Bahasa. Okay, the SLP part-time, so five trimester, that is one year and eight months. And usually you are required to take two courses in each semester. So all courses, all 11 courses from issue undang-undang perlembagaan until undang-undang keterangan, as you see in the slide, are all being taught in. These are all the core paper, core courses, all are being taught in Bahasa. So this is our notable alumni. Uh, I have to uh, share here, eh? Uh, for example, Tan Sri Sheikh Ghazali Abdul Rahman, these are the former uh, Chief Justice of Wilayah Persekutuan. Uh, and during the late Almarhum Professor Ahmad Ibrahim time, uh, when he was very much responsible in upgrading the status of the uh, Sharia Court, whereby uh, the insertion of uh, provision under Article 121 was put, whereby the, the status of the Sharia Court is similar with the status of the Civil Court. So that goes with upgrading the practices and procedure at the Sharia Court. So at that particular time, all the Qadi, all the judges at the Sharia Court will have to take diploma in administration of Islamic judiciary at our university. So if you can see, if you go around now, okay, we, we make a few visit in, in Perak uh, to, to Negeri Semilan, okay, Selangor, most of the judges, most of the chief justice, eh, Yang Ahmad Arif, have their uh, that age. And for example, Yang Ahmad Arif, uh, Datuk Naim, who is currently uh, our uh, Chief Justice uh, Wilayah Persekutuan, uh, of, and also our alumni of LLB, okay, he has he has obtained that age from our university. We have the Chief Justice of Shariah Court of Kedah, uh, who is Yang Ahmad Arif, Datuk Syed Abdul Rahman, who not only have uh, that age from our centre, but also he took LLM administration of Islamic law with us. Okay, so these are a, a lot of our notable uh, alumni around uh, in Malaysia alone as far, as far as our two postgraduate diplomas are concerned. Okay, so for further detail and information, uh, you can contact us uh, at our website and also give us a call if you're interested to pursue your study at Harun M. Hashim Law Center and also at Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Law. Thank you very much. I'm giving the floor back to Nat. Thank you, Madam. Wow, you actually uh, earlier <laughs> you finished. Earlier, That's so oh, fast. If, so if thank you so much. Can, uh, if earlier, I have uh, one. I have to. Uh, can I share a video? Um. Okay. I think. I think. Um. But before that, I think like maybe that just answer the question. Uh, oh, okay. from Brother okay. Ibrahim Solih he said, "Are there more options for master program, or is the only?" Available option is comparative laws. In what? Uh, Master of Comparative Law. If ah. you are interested to take your LLM uh, beside Master of Comparative Law, you can take uh, your LLM, Master of Law, at the center. Okay. Ah. Our LLM, uh, Master of Law, uh, the, the entry requirement is that we don't require a graduate that have LLB program. Eh? We, we take into our admission those who have no legal background at all. I mean to say if you have your degree in uh, marketing or you have degree in language, for example, you have degree uh, in economic or even in engineering, okay, you are allowed to take ma our Master of Law at the center. But as far as MCL is concerned, you need to have uh, LLB uh, degree. Okay, if that answers your question. I think that answer. I, I think that answer Brother Ibrahim's question. I think, uh, for this madam for not being able to show the video, madam. It's okay, no problem. Uh, if 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 madam had a, if if madam have a link to that video, maybe like I can put it in chat box. All right, mm. I'll share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, again, madam. Assalamualaikum. Okay, salam. <laughs> All right, everyone. With that, let's move on to the last session of the day which is with IAM Academy of Graduate and Professional Studies. 
With that, I'd like to invite uh, Associate Professor Dr. Badri Najib Zubair to take the floor. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And, uh, good afternoon. Can my voice be heard clearly? Yeah, clearly. Um, may I request uh, uh, sharing or, or yeah, yeah, sure. screen? So you're now able to see the screen, right? Ah uh, yes. All right. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, to all viewers. Uh, um, this is another option for um, postgraduate uh, studies uh, in IUM. So basically, um, um, the full name of our center is uh, IUM Academy of Graduate and Professional Studies. Um, we collaborate with uh, the faculties of uh, IUM uh, to offer uh, certain selected uh, academic programs uh, with some added value. So for example, uh, we have um, what we call um, uh, remote supervision scheme um, for selected programs um, with regard to the international students. But uh, for uh, local students, we have a few options as well, as I uh, will uh, explain in the uh, coming slides. So um, this is um, uh, these are some of the things that uh, we have uh, in our prof, uh, portfolio. Um, number one, as you can see there, why do we say school holiday? Because um, we have arranged uh, the delivery of the courses for uh, the teachers who are in service. So uh, because they are in service, they cannot um, take their time um, as full-time students. So um, we uh, have an offering which allows the uh, teachers in service to take the courses during the school holiday. So um, the courses are arranged in such a way that uh, they can still finish within two years. So um, they will, uh, you know, when uh, now we are in the endemic uh, phase, so uh, when we have a new batch, uh, the teachers who enroll in this uh, program, they will come to the uh, campus and uh, be having uh, classes uh, during school holidays. And then uh, they go off uh, and complete uh, the assignments and all this thing during the semester. And uh, uh, we have also a weekend-based uh, master's program. Uh, there are three programs that are available here. Master of Human Sciences in Political Science, Master of Islamic Rebunology and Heritage in Quran and Sunnah, and uh, Master of uh, Islamic Rebunology in Suludin and Comparative Religion. So basically what uh, is meant uh, by weekend-based uh, program here is that um, the teaching is done during weekend. So this is not like uh, the normal uh, mainstream uh, postgraduate offering where um, students will have to come sometimes during weekdays, even though the, the time is about maybe five to six or uh, starting the classes at uh, five or six uh, p.m. Uh, but uh, for weekend-based uh, programs, uh, they are arranged in such a way that uh, uh, the teaching will be on Saturday um, and um, they will be taking uh, during a weekend about three courses but uh, and then more or less in 10 weeks they will complete and the rest of the weeks in the semester because normally a semester is about uh, 17 weeks so uh, normal students will attend the semester for 17 weeks but now because uh, the way we arrange the uh, delivery so the teaching will be completed uh, in 10 weeks so uh, more or less they have seven weeks uh, uh, for them to do the assignments or complete uh, presentation and things like that um, and uh, after that there will be a semester break so more or less um, another three weeks so basically uh, it's like they will study in class for 10 weeks and then they have uh, no more classes for another 10 weeks. So this is a very good arrangement for 
uh, working adults because they don't have to uh, worry about coming, you know, uh, rushing uh, from uh, office, for example, uh, after office hours, uh, uh, thinking about five o'clock, they have to reach I uh, am maybe about 5.30 or even six. And if they come at six, maybe they will miss also the first hour or things like that. So uh, now they can come uh, during weekend and, uh, you know, 10 weeks uh, of teaching and then the other two, 10 weeks to complete whatever that uh, are required for the courses they are taking for the semester. Um, uh, and then we have uh, something almost similar to weekend based, but it is called modular, modular delivery. That this is for Master of Science in Islamic Banking and Finance. And this is actually uh, IUM's, um, um, uh, IUM's way of um, getting the practitioners, uh, if they want to improve their qualification and also Im improve their expertise in Islamic banking and finance, especially the bankers or those who are working in capital market and things like that. So if they want, uh, this is delivered during weekend and the teaching is about, uh, for one course is about seven uh, weeks only. And then the rest, they will be in touch with the lecturers uh, through various other means like online uh, and things like that. And they complete the course in a modular way. So uh, uh, this way they can finish the program uh, uh, rather fast and uh, they will be able to get the uh, highly uh, respected uh, qualification, which is Master of Islamic Banking and Finance uh, from IIM. And then the one that I mentioned about uh, the um, remote supervision, um, um, which is um, uh, for Islamic Banking and Finance, uh, this is doctor of philosophy. So um, the students who are overseas, they don't have to be in Malaysia, except for a very short period, maybe about three weeks, uh, uh, just to know the campus and things like that. But the rest of the time, uh, we will arrange uh, at IAM Academy for them to connect with their supervisors to ensure that they can uh, complete their thesis, for example, within the specified period and uh, graduate as a normal IUM student as well. So there are four programs that are available on this mode, which is uh, in Islamic banking and finance, in halal industry, in Arabic studies, and in halal, uh, master of halal industry management. Um, I'm running out of uh, uh, battery, unfortunately, uh, for some reason, uh, it uh, went out uh, very fast. So maybe I have to connect with my uh, handphone in case I am, uh, I mean, um, disconnected. I'm just uh, giving the information in advance. Um, all right, so um, these are the uh, further details about all this uh, program, you know, the rem uh, remote supervision, for example. And um, the good thing with regard to Remote supervision, for example, we have a platform that is called uh, um, uh, LEAP, which is uh, used uh, by our partner, uh, which is Ox Education. Uh, and this, uh, through this platform, uh, the MBA uh, was delivered, uh, the, is, is delivered in UK um, using this platform. So uh, with our engagement with uh, Ox Education, we are using that to help the students learning, to support students learning through uh, the um, uh, remote supervision. Um, and then uh, I would like to uh, say thank you to all viewers and we would like to, I would like to invite all viewers to uh, visit our uh, website and also social media. What you need is very simple, just type uh, I am Academy, you don't need to like the whole thing, IAM Academy of Graduate and Professional Studies, just write IAM Academy either in Facebook or in uh, YouTube or in for website and Google search. And then you will get the information about what. I guess that's the part where <laughs> the battery, uh, doctor's battery is out. 
Um, we wait for a while uh, for him to reconnect using his phone. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, can you please like, put it in chat box? Uh, or perhaps, you know, like raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Or you can unmute yourself by the time Dr. Badri is back. Um, after this, um, uh, this is the last session. So uh, we would have, I think that breakout, breakout room one is still uh, going on. So you may move to breakout room one after we finish uh, maybe a brief Q&A session with Dr. Badri himself. Oh. Assalamualaikum Dr. Are you there? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sorry about <laughs> the disconnection. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's the end of the presentation. So, now <laughs> uh, we can uh, get some questions, for example. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyone have any questions? Uh, Brother Kyril? Not sure, Muslimah. <laughs> Oh, I think like some have learned <laughs> during the sudden uh, outage, yeah. but uh, I think like the, the, the information is already there, the contact information is all, all already there. A a anyone? Uh, all right. I'm so, <laughs> so apologies for that, Doctor. Um, thank you so much, Doctor, for your presentation, and I hope that. Um, there will be more students uh, going in uh, IM Academy after this. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, all right, everyone. So after this, uh, we, we should be moving to the main session, but I think like uh, breakout room one still has another uh, presentation. So you may uh, join them there or alternatively, you may join the main session while we wait for some closing and then some group pictures, I assume. Thank you so much, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.
Kidding ya? Amin ya? Okay. Uh, once again, welcome to this room. So, Thank you. Now, uh, 